Good morning, Santa Rosa Christian Church. Uh, Pastor Steve here with our own, within our own church sanctuary, and it's completely empty, save Jason Harrington. Thank you, Jason. He's sitting up in the balcony, running the sound and the video, and here we go on a whole new normal. This is definitely a little weird and strange for me, speaking and preaching out to empty pews, but um, at the same time, it's exciting to be able to come into your home and kind of meet in our larger home and still be connected together. Even though we can't gather, we can still be community. And obviously, you know, you can't stop church because we are the church. So our ability to fellowship together and be together around the word is something that we're purposing to do. So just to speak about that, and we've been trying to send out information regarding that. Before I get into the Word, which again, I hope you have your Bible, so there's a little heads up. If you don't have your Bible yet, please go get a Bible and, uh, and or open up an app and you can turn to Psalms. I'll, I'll direct you in just a moment regarding that, but uh, we're going to get into the Word. But before that, we've been sending out emails letting you know ways that we can stay connected together. So if you're not getting those emails, then please let us know. And um, likewise, if you have any needs, we've been putting out information regarding that, and whether it be financial needs, whether it be just menial, practical needs, in any way, shape, or form, please connect with us, and we'd be happy to do that. And you can just email any one of us, just like steve at srchristianchurch.org, or glenn at srchristianchurch, or Noah, or Tara, or Cindy, or any of us, and we'll get back. Here's the great thing. And that is, as we've been telling people that, really almost all the responses we're getting back from you is, hey, how can I help? What can I do to serve? How can I in some way be available to help those that might be in need? Which is awesome. We're taking your names down, so we'll, we'll let you know. But as time rolls on and we get further down, which who knows how long this is going to last, then we might take up on that. And, and the needs might become even, even greater. And so I want to to stay connected, so be available by listening to not just this podcast that every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock we'll put out, but following this podcast, I'm asking you, and you'll hear this at the very end of what I have to say, is call someone that you know. If you're part of this church family, then maybe you're already part of a small group, and you can connect through your life group. We're using Zoom primarily as our video conferencing, and you should have gotten information regarding that about your meeting ID, if you need a password, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'll give a, a general one at the very end that if you're not part of a, a life group or a small group, a way to be able to connect following this, or maybe you just want to call somebody directly, but I'm going to encourage you to stay in fellowship. Even though we have, at least in the city of Santa Rosa and California and pretty much throughout our nation and the world, been encouraged, if not directed, to shelter in place, that doesn't mean that we likewise need to, if you will, inoculate ourselves and separate ourselves and isolate ourselves from one another. Really just the opposite. This is a great time to really find out the depth and the breadth and the meaning and the strength of our relationships that we have one with another. So I really want to encourage you to be able to, you know, take advantage of that and stay connected. And, and again, I'm, I'm just going to tell you that as soon as this is lifted, then we're going to get back together as a group. We'll physically gather together. Supposedly they're saying initially it was like April 7th. That means the following Sunday it's, Easter. Awesome. We're going to be together and we're going to have an incredible Easter celebrating the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. But if we can't do it that Sunday, whatever Sunday we do and are freed and instructed, hey, you can now gather back together as a group, then you know what? That Sunday will be our Easter Sunday and we're going to celebrate the life, the eternal life, the resurrected life that God has given us in Jesus Christ and it's going to be a great party. So I'm really looking forward to that. But in the meantime, here we are. And so I'm going to take a few minutes to be able to direct us to the Word and then after that, I'm going to, um, again, encourage you around 1030 to connect with somebody else or, or meet in small groups. But at this point, um, I'm assuming you're sitting home um, watching this, and uh, so I'm going to sit down too in, in our home, and uh, let's pray, and then we'll get into God's Word. 
So, Father, we thank you for the gift of your life in us. We thank you that during these very strange and actually very difficult times that we have our life in you. We thank you that we can connect together, even if it's through technology. Thank you for the gift of technology. But Lord, more than that, I pray that we can connect together heart to heart, spirit to spirit, person to person in any way, shape, or form, Lord, that we can and allow us to continue to grow in you. So thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. I pray that you would open it up to us today that we might learn of you and be with you and who you are and what you're doing here on the earth now. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in the Psalms and... We're in Psalms 103. It's a very familiar portion of Scripture. Many of you know it. You're familiar with different points of it. But I'm going to read the entire thing. It's 22 verses. It takes two minutes, ironically, and 20 seconds to read all the way through it. But I want to ask that as I read this and as you're following along, to let it just wash over you. Listen to these words, these Scriptures, and allow them to stir something up in you and for this moment and in this season. I'm going to start. Verse 1, New American Standard I'm reading from. So bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all of your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more. And its place acknowledges it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children to those who keep his covenant, who remember his precepts to do them. Verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you who serve him, doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his. In all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. Now, these were written by a man, David. And I want us to to remember who David was and the context and the person who penned these words by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and is now using this as an instruction, but an invitation to us and to our soul. David was a common man. He was, in fact, maybe less than common. Maybe the least of them. He was the youngest of all of his his siblings. He was the one that was given responsibility just to sit out in the fields and tend the sheep. And yet, in the reality of his life being just, what, normal, God spoke to him and called him and brought him forth and made him a leader amongst his people. But even in that place of leadership, he was also and always in a place of hardship and difficulty and turmoil and, if you will, warfare, just like us right now. Even once he was anointed as king, he had to, if you will, often shelter in place 
by hiding in caves so that his life would be spared. Other times he, would, he was having to hide out in the deserts. There was even a time when he had to hide out with his enemies, feigning you know, insanity that he would be protected. And then his entire rule and reign, he was battling. There was blood on his hand. He was surrounded constantly by death so that even at the end of his life, his own kids, his own family, his own son, sought to usurp his father's rule and reign in place and become king himself before his father was even dead. David was a man that was acquainted with hardship and difficulty and the threat of of even death. These, these verses that we read, this incredible psalm of praise and thanksgiving that's so directed to God does have a portion that's directed to you and me. There's a portion where David's speaking and saying God's aware of who we are and what we're up against. Verses 14, 15, and 16. I already read it, but let's go back again. As it relates to me, David, as it relates to me, Steve, as it relates to you, who we really are and what we're really up against well, God knows. He knows our frame. And he's mindful that we are but dust. A reference to Genesis chapter 2, right? God taking dust and breathing into it and bringing it to life. As for man, verse 15 says, his days are like grass as a flower in the field, so he flourishes. It's a beautiful, amazing, wonderful thing. Yet, when wind passes over it, when life and years go by its place. It says at the end, it doesn't even acknowledge it anymore. It's just gone. David says, I understand who I am. I know how God has made me. I think that's such an important message for everyone and all of us and realizing, yes, I mean, there's not one of us and there's not one single person on the face of the earth that's ever lived, that's living now, that shouldn't live with the reality that the breath that's in their being and the flourishing that they're experiencing is but just a gift for a moment. And it's from God himself. It comes from him. And yet, even though that was true and David was aware of that, again, personal, physical, temporal reality that he lived in, and even though he was living with constant danger and threat of death, and at times, blood on his hands, having to wage warfare. He found his soul needing to be positioned in a place that was proper and right, and if you will, Godward. And so he speaks in verse 1 and says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. The Hebrew word for bless, are you aware what it is? It literally means to kneel, to prostrate. David's speaking to his soul and saying, despite the fact that there's hardship and difficulty and frailty that I live in, you know what? Soul, in fact, more than that, what? The rest of verse one says, all that is within me, don't just tritely say, oh yeah, bless God, but instead kneel and prostrate and humble yourself before the Lord your God. Recognize who he is. A.W. Tozer, a great American pastor um, of the last century, has written many, many books. Um, one of the books that he wrote is called The Knowledge of the Holy. And um, he has some really keen insights regarding the worship of God. And he says this, when it comes to, Whatever comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Let me say that again. Whatever comes into your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. I hear that in the words of David. And again, my encouragement to you today in this season, that you would speak to your soul and that you would speak to your mind and your heart and your very physical being, and that you would exalt God and give him the place that's rightly his, that he's in control. What does it say in verse 19? Again, I don't have time to exegete all 22 verses, but just to bring out these highlights, he says, the Lord has established 
his throne in the heaven, and he is sovereign. His sovereignty rules over all. God is sovereign in the midst of this pandemic. God is sovereign right here at the Santa Rosa Christian Church sanctuary. God is sovereign in America. God is sovereign in your life. And he rules over every single facet. And so therefore our response is not one of fear or anxiety or hopelessness, but instead it's like, wow, I recognize who God truly is and I honor him. Tozer goes on and says this. Not only what comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us, but the church that cannot worship must be entertained. The church, the people of God that are unable to recognize who God is and honor him as being the Lord sovereign who's ruling over every facet of our life. He's in control. He's got us. He never says, oops. If a church can't do that, it must instead amuse itself, entertain itself. It must find ways to gather together and just have fun feeling moments that do nothing to connect us with who we truly are. Because worship Worship in, in a very real way. Worship is a deliberate, disciplined journey. It's our redemption road into our divine reality. That worship, our ability to honor God as God and to rejoice in the gift of life, his loving kindness, which is everlasting to everlasting, verse 17 our ability to be able to go that way then connects us to the reality of who not only he is, but who he's making us to be as he's redeeming us, right? And David, as he speaks that out in Psalm 103, and he says, okay, soul, everything here, bless the Lord, acknowledge who he is, prostrate yourself, align yourself with the reality of who God is, he reminds himself and he reminds us, well, then who am I seeing him to be? What are the great and mighty thoughts that are coming to my mind regarding God? Well, he, he goes there. Verse 3, who is he? Verse 3 says, God or who pardons all my iniquities, he forgives all my sins. In fact, it says what further on, as far as the east is from the west, he's removed our transgressions from us. Who is this great God? He pardons all my iniquities. He heals all of my diseases. He redeems your life. David, Steve, you, he redeems your life from the pit. And he crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Now that, that, that gets me. Because I see you, though I'm not with you, that, but I can imagine with ease a crown given by God being placed upon your head because he's redeemed you from that dark place of despair. He's redeemed you out of the spirit of this age which honors the, the cynical man, the skeptical man, the man or the woman who instead lives in a place of questioning and argues and is hostile, which is so contrary to the person of faith. And God lifts us out of that deep pit and gives life to us, verse 4 says. And then he puts this crown on you. He crowns you with his love, his loving kindness and compassion so that we can live at ease. We can live at peace. We can live with the gift of God's spirit or life living within us, which is filled with what? We know Galatians chapter 5. It's filled with love and joy and peace and patience. And we need all those things and all, the, all much more during this time where we feel a bit, um, if you will, captured. But we're not. We're redeemed. We're freed. We're liberated. We're delivered from all the evil that might come down. Yes, we're living in a place where we're having to battle, like David, against this virus. Yes, we're having to deal with the reality that I don't know what my 401k even looks like. I don't even want to know. I haven't even looked. But at the end of the day, I know the Lord has it. I know that he has me. 
and I know that he has you and that he's crowned you with loving kindness and compassion. Look at verse 5. Isn't that awesome? He satisfies your years. He satisfies these hours, these days, maybe weeks, where you're having to stay at home and only for special exceptions go outside. There's a sense of well-being and satisfaction that's within you with good things. Now, I, I don't know what you're eating. You might be having baked beans and cereal every single day. And you know, that's not a great thing. Well, I'm not talking about that. I don't think that David was talking about that either. I was talking about, and I think he's talking about this verse, us being able to feast on the divine reality and truths and the fruit that's rightfully ours in God, our forgiveness, God's compassion, his loving kindness, his righteousness, his greatness, which when I see that, it brings me to a place where I'm able to honor him. And as I honor him and worship him, what did I say? Then it leads us into this, if you will, journey or adventure of life that's rightfully ours in Jesus. So that it says at the end of verse 5, so that your youth, your vigor, if you will, is renewed like the eagle. You'll be able to lift up. We're at a place right now where there's a lot of uncertainty as it relates to the natural. There is no uncertainty in your life regarding your personage nor your future, according to Scripture. And your ability to see God and think that great way and speak to your soul and your spirit and your very being to be able to bless the Lord and honor Him will allow you day by day to connect with the eternal reality that's rightfully yours in this moment and in the years to come. It's the gift that God wants to give to you, and it's, the again, the redemption road that God has us on day by day by day. So let me encourage you today that, please, read over this. Take a moment. Take a few minutes. It took me two minutes and 20 seconds to read Psalm 103, Remind yourselves of these truth of scriptures, all right? Two, following this, I want you to be able to connect with your small group. If you're not part of a small group, here's a number we're going to get, we're going to flash up right now that you connect with. There's a small group that's made available through the church. Go ahead through Zoom, put in this meeting ID number, and you'll be able to connect together. If not, just call somebody. And I want you to take a moment and talk about, talk about the goodness of God in your life. Posture yourself. Speak to your soul. Speak to your being. Bless the Lord. Honor him for who he really is and what he's doing. Even in this, again, crazy, weird time, I encourage you to do that. And then thirdly, I want to encourage you to pray. Yeah, pray first and foremost, according to Scripture, for our authorities, our president, for our state and local leaders. They need wisdom. Right now, they're, they're, they're thinking the worst. They've got a plan for the worst. But instead, we're believing for the best. And, but pray for them. Pray for the wisdom that they need. Pray for our medical um, providers, for those that are frontline, hands-on, caring for those in need, that they likewise would have all that they need to be able to be effective in the way that they're caring for our, um, our, our neighbors. And then thirdly, I want you to likewise pray for your neighbors next door. I want you to be praying, Lord, help me to be able to speak the reality of who you are to the people I meet, whether it's at the line at the grocery store, maybe it's walking your dog, and again, you're socially distancing yourself, mitigating the curve and all that's going on, that you can speak through a smile or a word of the goodness and the greatness of God. I encourage you to be able to do that that you'd be able to read the scripture, connect together, and then likewise pray and serve those around you. If we do that, then I, then I guarantee that God's going to be doing great thing, and most importantly, he's going to be moving you forward on this redemption road that's right for yours, not only today, but in these days to come. Let's pray together, and then I'll let you go. So, Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you that we can look into your word. I thank you for the truth and the power of who you are. That Even though, again, we're not physically together, we're one in your spirit. 
whether or not we're in Santa Rosa or across the globe, there's a oneness because of who you've made us to be and you're making us to be. Lord, today we honor you. Lord, today we thank you. Lord, today we bless you for the greatness of your goodness and of your forgiveness, of your righteousness and your love upon us. Let it come in even greater measure today and the days ahead, Lord, for your sake and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Look forward to connecting with you soon. Thanks.